everyone and welcome back to my booktube channel Lisa in Bookland and welcome to the first vlog that I'm going to do for the Irish Readathon. It is the evening of Friday the 1st of March so um, I have been working up till now kind of on and off and I also edited and posted a booktube video so um, I haven't tried anything yet today. However I am in the middle of one book. I started it a little bit early and that's a friend or foe which side are you on by Brian Gallagher which um, fulfills the prompt for a children's read as well as many other books that I have lined up and um, so I'm 80 pages into this and I'm absolutely loving it. I spoke a lot about um, what I liked about uh, the previous Brian Gallagher book I read in my February reading wrap up but this is ab about a group of friends I think they're about 12 just in the build up to 1916 and they're from different kind of social backgrounds and their families have different ideas about the revolution that is brewing in Dublin um, in particular the two main characters there is one who is the uh, son of a policeman and then uh, Emer, his friend is involved in the Irish volunteers so they've kind of had a discussion um, to know that they're from different sides of the political divide obviously but it won't let them stop their friendship so um, yeah I'm just really happy to have discovered Brian Gallagher now I just love his books and their children's books but I think that they're uh, perfectly enjoyable for adults as well um, so it is uh, just after six o'clock so I'm going to get down for a serious evening of reading so I'm planning to finish that one um, and also there's always kind of like when on a Friday evening do you want to get your teeth into something or do you want like a fun read so I think um, obviously the children's book has been a little bit lighter to read so I think I'm going to get my teeth into this um, John Banville The Untouchable which I think is about like the Cambridge spiring so an Irish author not set in Ireland but I'll love the books on my TBR that will be set in Ireland so yeah this is just calling to me today so I'll see how I get on with that one um, I've read a good bit of John Banville before um, not always writing under John Banville usually under Benjamin Black um, so I think this might be a little bit more literary but uh, yeah very excited to give it a go anyways if I do feel like a change throughout the course of the evening uh, we're, like we know this isn't going to happen I'm probably just going to go to bed at 10 o'clock but I might read a few chapters of The Rachel Instant and yes it's been really exciting seeing everybody's Irish Readathon uh, content going up so I'm looking forward to that in terms of what's ahead of me in the weekend I suppose plenty of reading hopefully but I will be gone more or less all day Sunday um, because the Galway footballers are playing Monaghan in Clonus up in Monaghan which is a three hour drive away from me. I will be six hours plus in a car on Sunday so that should be fun but uh, hopefully I will get lots of reading done before uh, I start back again to work on Monday. So I just finished Friend or Foe by Brian Gallagher and as predicted I just loved it. I liked it for all the same reasons I liked the other book Across the Divide. A lot of it was set in like the tensions coming up to the 1916 rising very much a portrayal of like a divided city um so between um the police and the family of police the volunteers and then i suppose kind of like poorer people um that were represented here that were kind of just caught up in the middle of all and didn't really have any particular opinion but i loved the portrayal of how they were taught in school and um especially i thought the rising was done really well as well the kind of confusion and divided loyalties that would have been around and um yeah how small a city would have felt um when different sides and different locals were fighting against each other but yeah brilliant book and i think next i will start uh the untouchable and then maybe finish off with a few chapters of the rachel incident um when it gets a bit later so yeah we'll see so it's now Saturday afternoon, March the 2nd, and I have done a good bit of reading this afternoon. In the morning, I actually, um, I've, my new obsession is like um, darning. I got one of them darning mushrooms and uh, yeah, it's just really easy to mend socks, which wear out so quickly. So yeah, I've been doing that and listening to some podcasts and some booktube. Um, but yeah, I have spent some of this afternoon reading The Untouchables by John Banville and I'm really enjoying it. It took a while to get into it last night. I think I read about 50 pages last night. It is very literary and about something I don't know a huge amount about. I had some idea about the Cambridge Spy Ring but not really the names. Um, once I got into it then I really am enjoying it now. It is kind of what I'm going to keep hammering on at this today. I haven't started the Rachel Instant yet because it is one of those books I think that you just need to read all in like one weekend. I feel like if I put it down for a few days I would find it hard to pick up again but um, yeah I, I'm just I just am enjoying it on the whole and um, the timeline is I suppose it being so literary that was one of the first things that I found very hard to grip 
is that it is it starts off when he's obviously just been unveiled um as a spy and he's writing this diary um and this reporter comes to his door that uh, wants to ask him about obviously one of the many many um reporters has asked him he decides to have a conversation with this person so it's kind of a mix of a diary and the conversation he's having with her I think it's not very clear and it does drift between the present and the past um very a lot and between different countries and it feels like we move around within the past as well so um I think at this stage I've given up just trying to figure out exactly when it's when things happen and just go with it and I have to say like as you'd probably expect from John Banwell it's absolutely beautifully written like it's literary but I don't think in kind of like in that there's too much description or that for me it's kind of just really kind of stream of consciousness but the writing itself and the the writing itself and the sentences by themselves are um, really really well done and beautiful as I'd expect so yeah I'm going to keep going with that um I kind of am hoping to finish this today and then maybe I'll start the first section of the Rachel Instant tomorrow um so it's now Monday morning and I'm back at work it does always feel like a bit of a marathon on Monday because I have a condensed working schedule which technically means I work longer days Monday to Thursday and in theory no worries on Friday so um, I don't expect to get much done um, Monday to Thursday but uh, I said I'd check in to fill you in on what I read yesterday um, so as always I expect I'll read a lot in car journeys I am very lucky that I can read in the car it's never been an issue for me <laughs> many years of practice I'd say um, I do know when you're going somewhere new I do like looking out the window as well I did however manage to finish The Untouchable by John Banville and oh my god I loved this book <laughs> I think like I was probably a bit lukewarm um about it the last time I talked to you about it because it did take a while to get into like the for the first 50 pages or so I was really get very much getting used to the writing style and the characters and um trying to get my head around the kind of Cold War history as well uh so I did go back and read a little bit more about the Cambridge spies like about 50 pages in and as always with these kind of books that really helped um but then when I got used to that, um, like I just absolutely love John Banville's writing. This is the first like really literary book of his that I've read. Uh, this follows um Victor Maskell, um, who is like very, very, very loosely um disguised Anthony Blunt. Um, but also there's all the other members of the Cambridge Spiring that he encounters, but they aren't so maybe it's not good not to know too much about the history because they um are all given different names and they probably other parts of their storylines are changed a tiny bit, but the main change to his storyline is that actually he's given Irish heritage. So his parents are from Ireland and his dad is still the Archbishop of Down. So that makes him kind of, I suppose, a little bit of an outsider um, for all of his like um, education at Cambridge and his uh, public school education. Um, he still is a little bit of an outsider to the actual establishment. But then what makes him even more of an outsider, of course, is that he's a gay man. Um, he doesn't discover this, like this isn't a spoiler. It, it, it's revealed very early on, but it's something that he takes a long time to realize. Um, so it's just a really fascinating story about that and about what it would be like to live as a gay man at that time um it's a very like honest book and he's not the most likable character all the time obviously um but he it, he is somebody that I suppose you have a good bit of compassion for and um yeah I just thought it was absolutely brilliant it definitely won't be my last John ben Banville and I'm so glad now that I can just pick up all of his other books and not be afraid that I'm not going to like his more literary style because I thought it was really really well done here um, if you are interested in the keyword spiring or this kind of piece of history at all, um, I would definitely recommend. So after that, I actually did end up starting as well Grace by Paul Lynch on the way home. Um, that's because I suppose I wanted to have a more lighthearted book and like more serious book on the way at the same time. And I didn't actually expect to finish The Untouchables so fast. Uh, Paul Lynch is obviously well known of recent times for writing prophet songs. So and uh, somebody in my book club said that they were reading this and I was like, oh, is it good? And she's like, well, it's Paul Lynch so it is I'm expecting going to be quite dark and gritty and it is so far um it's set during the famine at the very start of the famine um Grace's mother is very heavily pregnant and to 
their father is dead so she can't um, so they have no money to buy even what food is available and as you all know there is no real food available so she cuts Grace's hair off and gives her father's clothes to wear and um, sends her off to work to be basically the new provider for the family um, so yeah we've just really re reached that point but I'm enjoying it so far again it just takes a few pages into the writing style but then when you get used to it it's fine but I don't think it's the right book if I just have like 15 minutes here and there and breaks to read so I am going to start also at the Rachel Instant by Carla O'Donoghue they uh, group read so I think this is going to be the book I read in like patchwork throughout the week so really looking forward to that as well it may be Monday but at least I can look out at these lovely daffodils um it's so nice that it's spring again even though I do love winter um it is nice to see the flowers coming back so it's now Tuesday evening and I'm hoping to film a video for the Irish Readathon about um, more historical fiction recommendations. So I have decided the books I wanted but now I have to try and get them out of my bookshelves. So let me just give you a quick preview behind the shelf you see in most of my videos which is actually that one. <laughs> so it's actually just a shelf in the middle of my room um, and then there's the edge and yeah it's a disaster. <laughs> um, I have spent a lot of this week trying to get various documents and things together for my house but uh, every time I'm trying to do this to get books out for a video I'm like that needs to happen sooner rather than later for no other reason. Um, no I'm only joking of course for other reasons but um, this would be the main one. So yes this is what my shelves look like which is there they're all horizontally stacked on that shelf to, to try and uh, get the most space as possible. Um, then the sh actual shelf ends at the bottom of the screen there and then the books just continue so that shelf is a particular pain to get stuff out of but it's okay. Um, it's something that has to be done. Another shelf of books that's slightly easier maybe um, that one is that when you get to these shelves why do I still have all those CDs? I'm just a hoarder. And then these shelves obviously the wall is behind it so they're all double stacked but I have to try and remember what's behind what so um, why do we do this to ourselves? <laughs> So just a quick check in. I'm really glad to see how many uh, people have been putting up videos and things for the Irish Readathon. And also, um, the one thing is there's so much group discussion happening in the group chat about the Rachel incident. And I'm only like two chapters in. So after I'm finished here, I'm definitely going to have to try and catch up in this so I can join in with the group chat. Um, I am enjoying it so far. I've literally, you know, we've just um, we've just met the character. So we do go back to the past a little bit, and the main character is working uh, for college in this bookshop and she meets this other guy who's a very gay and um, yeah just a friendship that sparks up between them um, but it even at the end of the second chapter there it, you obviously find out why she's working in this bookshop despite being from, from quite a wealthy background um, her parents were hit really badly by the Celtic Tiger and they um, so she has to work to fund her college education and um, yeah I don't think I've read any it's just shocking I haven't much I've read much Irish contemporary fiction but I don't think I've read any book about the Celtic Tiger or like the aftermath or the crash so um, yeah that'll be interesting um, the other really random thing I've been reading this week is um, the Constitution <laughs> because um, we have a referendum coming up on Friday very important and I was trying to make up my mind um, a fully informed vote of what I was going to food for and I um I just wanted to get a context of uh, what was actually changing in terms of what else is in the constitution. We had an old copy in the house here and I just read the family articles and then I just ended up reading the rest so um, <laughs> it was a bit weird when I decided I might as well just keep going. I think I only have like three more sections to read the, about the courts and I don't know. To do that you need to be online. Shush. I've decided to count it as a book um, because you know what it is. So just a quick update for Wednesday evening as I, it is now very late after work. I had a sewing class, which is really nice. Um, I did one every Wednesday evening for the next four weeks. And um, yeah, just kind of the basics of how to sew. This is quite a basic class of the things I was already familiar with, but I think we're going to build up um, over the weeks. And in the last week, then we'll, we're going to make like, I think a quarter size dress or something um, just to learn all the techniques. So I'm really excited for that. But in reading terms, um, I have been reading The Rachel Instant. I got to read a little bit at lunch and also um, I just finished off three or four chapters there because I really wanted to catch up with what people had been reading in the group read and I'm really, really enjoying it. But uh, yeah, it's really good down an unexpected road. Like from the back, it sounds like it's all going to be about the relationship between Rachel and her English professor. And there is a little bit of that, but it's really a lot more about her friendship with her roommate, James. And there's a big twist to that 
that, which is really interesting. Um, it really is such a fast read and kind of lots of fun things. Um, I love the bookshop setting and they just hosted like a book launch <laughs> in kind of weird circumstances and all the like factoids about Cork and yeah, I'm just loving the setting. So can't wait to see where it goes to next. So it's now Friday, International Women's Day. So belated um, happy Women's Day to everybody that it relates to. Just a small clip to close out this vlog. Um, I know I haven't talked to you much the last day or two. It's because I haven't done much reading, to be honest. My sewing class on Wednesday was really, really enjoyable. Um, I have read a few more chapters of The Rachel Instant. So I've just started chapter 12 and I'm still really enjoying it. So that's great news. Unfortunately, I haven't made any more progress on Grace but now that the weekend has started hopefully I will be able to read a lot more of this and more books as well and yeah just the final run up to my little bit of time off next week um so I don't think I'll be reading any more this evening because I now have to go and vote we have a referendum on two amendments to the constitution today in Ireland but I'm also going to see a musical Legally Blonde um it'll be my third time seeing this particular musical and amateur production near me which I'm really excited for I do really love it as a musical. So just to close it out on a recap with what I did read and um, so I did finish these two books the children's book Friend or Foe by Brian Gallagher and uh, The Untouchable by John Banville and um, so yeah I, I actually just heard that um, the Courage International Literature Festival is going to be on in Galway in April and John Banville is actually giving a talk so I'll be very much looking forward to going to that and then yeah I just started Grace and the and the Rachel incident. Um, both. It's a pity that none of the prompts for the Irish Readathon were for names in the title because I would have smashed that one. But yes, looking forward to seeing you in my next vlog and I'll talk to you later.